Hello everyone, my name is Pedro Rodrigues and currently I'm a researcher at the Institute for Polymers and Composites at the University of Minho in Portugal. Um, first of all, I would like to thank to Joseph, Joseph Nagy for uh, this opportunity to present our work uh, on the online international meeting for users of OpenFOAM of this year. Um, in this presentation, me and my colleague Bruno Ramoa will show you some of the work uh, developed during the, our research activities, uh, which is regarding the use of open source tools, uh, namely OpenFOAM, in order to provide to the Portuguese safety footwear industry computational tools um, for designing improved safety footwear. For the outline of this presentation, uh, it will encompass a small introduction of the theme and its relevance to the Portuguese safety footwear industry, uh, followed by a case study where OpenFOAM was used uh, through the Solids for Foam toolbox to model standardized tests uh, performed on safety toe caps at the industry level. Afterwards, we will show the results comparing simulations and experimental work and finally, we will present some conclusions and proposals for future work. So, the footwear market is a key manufacturing sector within the European Union, and it has been uh, rising uh, throughout the last decades. This sector distinguished itself by constant innovation in design, uh, in the use of new materials and new manufacturing techniques. Uh, Specifically, the Portuguese footwear industry is considered one of the most important internationalized sectors of the Portuguese economy, and it has been growing steadily over the last decades. Compared with the global market, only China is responsible for more than 85% of the global production and exportation of shoes. This is mainly due to their low-cost uh, products and low, the lower cost of uh, manufacturing. Within the European countries, uh, Italy presents the highest cost per pair of shoes, an average of 40 euros, followed by Portugal in the second place with an average of 24 euros. Despite the higher labor cost in Europe, the main difference is the quality of the products, the cost of the innovation and the personalization of the footwear. On a report from 2012 published by the Publications Office of the European Union, the European footwear industry uh, was mainly comprised by small to medium companies with 10 to 15 workers. In Portugal, this reality still holds and uh, a lot of the development is still made by trial and error without the use of Kai tools uh, due to the high licensing costs of, uh, of this proprietary software and the lack of know-how. In the recent years, uh, the Portuguese footwear industry started to invest in research and uh, technological development uh, of new materials, of new products and the new process that lead to revolutionary solutions, uh, which results in high value added products. And these products are intended to compete directly with the crescent growing markets uh, all over the world. The safety footwear industry is a niche market and it represents only 1% of the Portuguese footwear industry. Um, this type of footwear fits into the category of personal protective equipment and it is intended to protect the user's feet uh, from hazards like uh, electro cushions, uh, falling objects and slipping floor and to prevent pot potential accidents to the, the users. Um, the manufacturing of these products requires high performance materials which are capable of withstand the most adverse and uh, unpredictable uh, situations. The main component of a safety shoe are the hopper, the, the outsole, the penetration resistant layer and the toe cap. And we will pay special attention on the toe cap uh, component for the, the upcoming slides. Historically, uh, most of the workers' shoes were made of uh, wood and leather and did not provide any kind of protection. However, a generalized concern regarding safety measures was not obtained until the beginning of the 20th century and it was only in the 90, 1920s and 30s that the first prototypes of safety shoes uh, started to emerge and these patented devices uh, were intended to protect the foot uh, from falling objects and it served as precursors uh, for the modern toe caps that uh, uh, exist uh, today. The traditional safety shoes uh, are heavy and bulky 
and this extra weight and uh, inflexible design uh, leads to a significant increase in oxygen consumption and it could be easily correlated to discomfort and fatigue of the, the worker, uh, which results in less productivity. And in some cases, in extreme cases, workers uh, neglect the use of this protection equipment, uh, which increases the risk of uh, injury. Therefore, there is a necessity to design lighter weight components, which encompass uh, safety and comfort at the same time. So, uh, what are the main requirements for safety toe caps? Um, according to the international standard 2345, uh, these safety toe caps must withstand an impact of 200 joules and a compression loading up to 15 kN force, uh, while maintaining a specified minimum clearance uh, under the, the toe cap. Um, this component uh, in the market can be manufactured with different uh, materials and the most common are metallic solutions, uh, which can be made of, uh, of steel and uh, or aluminum alloys, uh, and non-metallic solutions, uh, which are mainly made of thermoplastic or thermoset polymers with or without um, reinforcements. Comparing both solutions, metallic toe caps uh, tend to be heavier and can represent up to 35% of the total shoe weight. Uh, it conducts electricity, which increases the risk of electrical shock, and it can cause inconvenience in security checkpoints due to metal detectors. Um, and after a critical mechanical uh, solicitation, the toe cap deformation uh, can be permanent, which difficults the removal of the user's feet. On the other hand, uh, non-metallic solutions can be up to 40% lighter and they are good insulators and are capable to recover from uh, deformation. But to have a comparable mechanical performance to metallic, uh, metallic solutions, the non-metallic toe caps uh, requires a higher volume concept, uh, which results in a bulkier shoe, uh, which causes uh, aesthetic and design problems to the safety footwear industry. There are several reports uh, in the literature that uh, present studies on metallic toe caps uh, using commercial softwares, and they have interesting results such as uh, substantial weight reduction up to 50% uh, uh, by using strong, stronger metallic alloys and local hardening zones, uh, and this can allow the development of new uh, designs. For non-metallic solutions, uh, we, can, we could only find uh, reports related to material development, mostly with thermosets uh, with impregnated fibers, like uh, glass, aramide or carbon fibers. But uh, this, uh, these reports tested the toe caps under um, conditions below the standardized conditions for safety uh, footwear. So for this project, uh, we were approached by a company partner that wanted to identify and model the mechanical performance of a commercial plastic toe cap. And therefore, our main goals uh, were uh, to identify the toe cap materials and uh, characterize the material of the toe cap uh, in terms of mechanical performance uh, through a tensile test, model the standardized tests for safety toe caps which is or which are the compression and the impact tests. And finally, uh, compare the simulation results to, experiment, to the experimental results and uh, try to validate the, the, the tool. For the methodology, uh, firstly, the identification of the material uh, was carried out through infrared spectroscopy and differential scanning calorimetry. Uh, and we use uh, electronic microscopy uh, to detect possible uh, reinforcements on the polymeric uh, matrix. Um, the mechanical characterization, characterization was performed at uh, 50 uh, millimeters per minute uh, to, to, to define the stress strain behavior of the material and to better approximate the material behavior uh, after healed. Afterwards, the computational toolbox for uh, fluid solid interaction built uh, within the open foam framework, uh, which was uh, solid for foam, uh, was used for modeling the impact and the compression uh, tests. 
And here uh, we present a video which illustrates the compression and the impact tests. For each, each test, uh, a cylinder clay is placed inside the toe cap, uh, which measures the total deformation of uh, the toe cap. Uh, on the compression test, uh, a plate is used to compress the toe cap up to 15 kN force. Um, and in the end, the total deformation of the clay is uh, measured. For the impact test, a free-falling striker is placed uh, uh, high enough to have a total impact energy of 200 joules. And uh, in the end, uh, the deformation of the clay must be within the standardized values. And this value uh, is equal to the toe cap uh, clearance. For modeling purposes, uh, in the compression test, we imposed a fixed displacement at the top uh, plane uh, of 5 mm per minute and an ending criterion of 15 kN force. At the impact test, uh, in order to have an impact energy of 200 joules, uh, we took into consideration the weight of the striker and we adjust the speed accordingly. Uh, the simulation was stopped after the striker reached a velocity of 0 meters per, per second. As for the boundary conditions, the top of the moving plane uh, was defined with a fixed displacement moving at uh, 5 mm per minute. The bottom of the plate was set with a fixed displacement, with a zero displacement in all Cartesian uh, directions. The contact between the toe cap and the plates uh, were defined with a solid contact boundary condition uh, and we use a coefficient of friction of 0.3 and a penalty scale value of 0.02. Uh, we use a similar scenario uh, for the impact simulations uh, and in order to constrain the movement of the striker only at the uh, y direction uh, we use several symmetry planes and we define this uh, on, the, on, on, on several uh, striker uh, planes. The initial velocity of the striker uh, was imposed using uh, the set fields utility. So now regarding the results of, um, of uh, our study. Uh, here we have a sum up of our material characterization. Uh, at the top, we have the Fourier infrared spectroscopy. Uh, on the bottom, we have a differential scanning calorimetry. On the top, again, image C, we have a scanning electron microscopy. And on the bottom, image D, we have the stress strain curve, which we will talk a little bit more in the next slide. Now, focusing on these three, uh, we have used a polycarbonate resin that we had available in our laboratory. And comparing the, um, the spectroscopy peaks, you can see almost a perfect match uh, or a perfect match between the principal peaks of uh, polycarbonate, which allows us to deduce that the material used for the manufacturing of the toe cap was in fact polycarbonate. Um, given this initial assessment, we then need some other tests to corroborate this. Uh, one we used was the, dif the differential scanning calorimetry to identify the glass transition of the material. Um, as you can see in the, in, the plot, uh, in the plot of image B, uh, the glass transition of both materials are quite close to each other and uh, it is expected that unless they are exactly the same material to have some shift on the glass transition. Um, this again allows us to, given the information that we had before, to corroborate that this was in fact a polycarbonate. Now the only thing left was to identify if this polycarbonate had some type of filling, some type of, um, of filler inside and for this we, we used scanning electron microscopy to analyze the fractured surface of uh, a polycarbonate uh, sample material. And as you can see, the fractured surface is clean without any presence of inclusions of fibers or clays or uh, any other um, any other foreign material. Um, on the bottom, lastly, we have the tensile curve. 
For tensile tests, we follow the standard ASTM D638, which is a standard test method for tensile properties of plastics. Uh, we perform 10 tensile measurements at quasi-static uh, velocities of uh, 50 mm per minute, and we use an optical extensometer for determining the elastic modulus. Uh, the engineering curve is depicted in the image on the left with a, with a black line. Uh, this concept of the stress-strain curve does not account for the variation of the cross-section of the specimen during the test. And to, we assume the relationships seen here to account for a homogeneous deformation of the specimen during the test. And we have calculated a homogeneous uh, stress-strain curve. However, to the best of our knowledge, solids for foam does not have a model to describe the strain softening that, it, that is ob observed after reaching the yield stress. And as such, we made an assumption regarding the material behavior. Uh, we used the slope of the initial portion of the strain hardening to define a pseudo yield, uh, yield value and describe the strain hardening portions through a multilinear isotropic hardening approach. Uh, to use this in solids for foam, we have to prepare a file describing the plastic strain versus the, the true stress. Um, by defining the point which you consider to represent yield, it will have a value by default of zero plastic strain. The remaining points are calculated by subtracting the elastic strain to the total strain. The former is calculated by the ratio between the stress and the elastic modulus. Uh, in sum, through tensile testing, we perform, we determine the elastic modulus and the post yield behavior of the polymeric material. And regarding the properties of the steel, uh, the steel used in the striker, we used average properties representative of uh, this class of materials, since we were not uh, interested in analyzing anything in it. In this work, we also performed a mesh sensitivity analysis. We prepared uh, five meshes with a toe capped geometry, and the mesh varied uh, with a factor of three in the number of elements per each level. We had five levels in this in this study, and in the image on the left, you can observe the computational time as a function of the size of the of the mesh. And on the right uh, image. Um, the clearance that was measured in the um, that was measured in the clay um, or our fictitious uh, clay with uh, the number of cells in the mesh. In this slide, uh, we present the animation and the, and the comparison between experimental results and uh, the results from the simulation in the case of uh, of the compression. Uh, the simulation was stopped when the force registered in the compression plane reached 15 kilonewtons, which is the, the same that is done in, in practical experience. Uh, the results that we obtained for this result, this uh, test in specific, are, uh, are quite promising. They, they have a very small difference between the experimental curve and the simulation curve. Um, however, this, the compression test is not the, the most uh, critical uh, test that the TOCAP goes through and uh, is here because this is made in, uh, in, uh, in quality assurance of the product. Here we have the impact uh, simulation results. Uh, the animated image on the left, you can see the evolution of the von Mises stress throughout the impact uh, simulation. And also we use the, um, a Python annotation filter to record the displacement on the cell that we are considering to be representative of the displacement of the clay. Um, in practice, the company usually performs uh, three measurements with the toe caps and they register the clay value. They supply us those results for this uh, toe cap with this material that we, have, uh, that we have analyzed and the results are depicted in the bar graph on the left where you can, uh, where you can uh, see the, the clearance that, uh, that the toe cap had after impact and uh, we have uh, error that we consider to be, to be quite good also given the simplification that we made for the material model with an error inferior to 10%. Here we have another, another plot where we have um, highlighted the cells that have uh, actively yield during the impact simulation. We see that the majority of the stress is focused on the on the front of the toe cap where the impact site is located, as would be expected. 
In this slide, we present where the stress is distributed in, uh, in uh, what we consider uh, transition-like regions. So from 45 to 70 is a comfortable region for yielding from 70 to 100 is a critical region and the cells that are between uh, 100 and 105 are uh, extremely close to the maximum, to the maximum um, uh, stress value that we gave it in the simulation and uh, this has to, has to be attended in, uh, in, in the future work. Uh, however, this type of simulations allows, allows us to get a lot of insight on where the stress is distributed and uh, this can be used for the product development and enhancing the, the geometry of this type of safety, safety products. Now we have reached the conclusions and future work. As many conclusions of this work, uh, we are able to identify the thermoplastic material that was used for the manufacturing of the TOCAP that our company partners supplied for this work. We are also able to describe the tensile behavior through quasi-static tensile tests. Um, we, were able, we are also able to, to model the quality tests that are performed at the industry level uh, through uh, an FSCI toolbox uh, developed within the open foam framework called Solids for Foam and the results that we are obtained are very promising and in fact Solids for Foam and open foam um, appear to be tools that have the potential to have a high added value to the footwear industry. Uh, for future work, there is still a lot to, to, to be made in this area. Um, the safety footwear and the footwear industry in general are always looking for lighter products, uh, products with enhanced breathability, enhanced um, thermal comfort, and with multi-material. And in this sense, computational assisted engineering can help. And open foam and solids for foam have a specially high potential uh, to shine in this uh, in these areas. Uh, finally, but not less important, we would like to to thank the following entities and persons for supporting our work, uh, to the Impulse Program and the FAMES project for funding this research, and the support of the computational cl uh, clusters Search and uh, and Mac. Uh, also to Professor Philip Carvey from the University of College Dublin for, uh, for his very highly appreciated input and availability. And uh, finally to Mr. Josef Nagy for the opportunity for allowing us to participate in this, in, in this year's event. Uh, thank you all for your attention and uh, stay safe.